Welcome to UCLA Connections, Conversations to Build Community and Foster Resilience. My name is Allison Hewitt, and I'm with UCLA Connections. I'll be moderating our conversation today about the unique experiences of veterans during the pandemic and how to support them. Thank you for the questions you submitted when registering. We've made an attempt to incorporate many of them into our conversation. This webinar and others in the series are available for viewing at ucla.edu slash connections. Today's guest, excuse me, today's guest is Tess Banco, Executive Director of the UCLA VA Veteran Family Wellness Center. The center helps veterans and their families by providing wellness services and resilience skills. It's based at the West LA VA and operates under the auspices of UCLA's Nathanson's Family Resilience Center, currently providing services through telehealth for the pandemic. In addition to being a social worker, Tess Banco is also a Marine Corps veteran. For today's 20 to 30 minute conversation, we'll talk about how the pandemic is affecting veterans, ways it's especially hard for veterans, ways the rest of us can learn from veterans, and ways we can better serve those who have served. So welcome Tess, and thank you for joining me and our viewers today. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you here. Um, before we can really talk about how to serve veterans, I think it helps to know what challenges they're facing. Generally speaking, how are veterans faring during the pandemic? Well, like any population, it varies. There are currently 18.8 million veterans in the US uh, with the smallest component of those being uh, women veterans. Here in Los Angeles, we've got about 340,000 veterans and even more family members. Veterans have a number of conditions that might make them um, even more susceptible to some of the effects of COVID-19. Those include um, prior trauma. So if a veteran or a family member or even the general population has experienced a stress disorder, traumatic brain injury, and any other prior trauma, this time might be much more difficult. Uh, isolation is a marker uh, of post-traumatic stress and can be very challenging. And as you know, right now during COVID, many of us are feeling isolated away from friends and families. So it's very challenging. Uh, lack of routine, especially for a veteran that might have experienced a traumatic brain injury or TBI can be a concern because routines are disrupted. MST or military sexual trauma, uh, this time might stir up feelings of moral injury or feeling unprotected from the effects of uh, the challenges that are occurring, uh, which include not only the pandemic, but also racial unrest. There are also a whole host of uh, mental or physical injuries that might be pre-existing, um, which the trauma might begin to stir up uh, and inflame, actually. Besides that, there can also be reintegration challenges. Uh, so even though we're in the midst of a pandemic, uh, active duty military families and veterans are still transitioning out of the military or making life transitions. And when you transition out of the military or there's a change in life, there are certain elements that you can lose and it can be very, very hard. And those include mission, identity, meaning and purpose. And you mentioned um, job loss is one of the challenges uh, are there certain industries where veterans are overrepresented, uh, overrepresented that have been harder hit by the pandemic? Absolutely, job loss, economic factors, and the closures; those types of issues can be very challenging on anyone's mental health. Some of the industries that have been impacted here in Los Angeles, especially, are the film and TV industries. You have veterans that go into the creative arts and they work uh, on set or on films and those industries, as you know, have uh, halted production, I think are only just now starting back up. But in the midst of that, there's been uh, a lot of economic loss that's happened. Uh, in addition, uh, the service industries have also been impacted and that includes um, food and beverage services, uh, barbers, hairdressing, those types of trades. So. Uh, veterans and families who rely on those for their economic well-being have definitively been impacted. 
So before we even get to some of the more mental or emotional challenges, um, how can people help if they know somebody who is affected by job loss? There are a couple of different resources in the community for job loss. Uh, one of the partners at the VFWC is called Village for Vets and they provide stipends uh, for veterans who may be facing uh, challenging times financially. And that is also funded by the Change Reaction, which is a, also a supporter of UCLA, a fantastic organization. In addition, there's peer support. Peer support is a, an area that is uh, burgeoning here in Los Angeles County, the Veteran Peer Access Network through the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health is going to uh, open and that will entail 55 peers across Los Angeles County that are there to support and to serve. Um, so these are veterans or family members with shared life experience and they can be contacted to provide key support, uh, especially during challenges like job loss. They're also very well versed in the resources. In addition, there are the county resources. There's a county support line for workers who are facing job loss uh, if you look uh, online, just, just type it in and, and take a look. There are some great resources there. In addition, the VFWC for veterans specifically has created 11 pillar areas uh, resource sheets. So I'm happy to, to offer those to all of you for your use in supporting yourselves or the veterans and families in your life. And Let's talk a little bit about some of the other challenges that can come up as well. How are disorders like post-traumatic stress disorder, traumatic brain injuries, and other prior traumas making this time more difficult? Well, isolation, as I mentioned, is key. Sheltering in place has its joys, but also has its challenges. You're isolated from everyone, or you're in constant contact with your family or your roommates. So depending on how much of that time either alone or around other people that's been increased, it can uh, represent a challenge to your routine. Uh, it can represent a challenge to feeling like you're part of the community and reaching out. So not being able to connect with your friends and support network as usual really can compound those pre-existing uh, traumas, as I mentioned. But, you know, on the there is, uh, you know, peer support. There's, there's really looking for the silver lining and, and uh, you know, the increased family time. So being able to spend that additional time, even though some of the stresses and strains of being sheltered in place together might be prevalent. And we, I want to include a few audience questions as well. Um, one nice one we received was um, asking how others can help? How, how can I talk to a veteran who is struggling, for instance? I think that's a fantastic question. And I think that it's a, a really great thing to, to even ask that question. And really that is the answer, asking the question. How are you? How are you doing? I, I care about you. Uh, I noticed that you seem down maybe, or I noticed that this time might be challenging for you. And then going from there, just really opening up a space uh, free of judgment where you can hear uh, what the veteran has to say and also suspending uh, the desire to take action because that then opens up the space for the veteran to be able to kind of work through some of the challenges with a very caring and listening ear with them, which is you, uh, and then hopefully be able to come to some conclusions or recognize that, hey, maybe there are some resources in the community that might be able to help me. So I think also uh, knowing what those resources are is important. So again, I'm happy to share the 11 pillar resource areas. And you can also go to the LA County Department of Mental Health and look up the Ven Veteran Peer Access Network for more of those resources as well. And what's the best way for people to find out about those 11 pillars? Is this something they should visit a website for? Is this something you want to run through quickly? Absolutely. So the 11 pillar areas are dimensions of veteran and family life. And those include the different areas that most of us would have, including behavioral health and um, spiritual health and physical health, in addition to a host of other 
resource areas or dimensions that include legal and benefits and housing and homelessness. And if you'd like to take a look at those, please uh, feel free to visit the VFWC website at vfwc.ucla.edu. Another audience question uh, was about self-care techniques, specifically what self-care techniques do you recommend for veterans who are working from home? Absolutely. Uh, we found ourselves, again, thrust into this uh, very interesting uh, period in time where, you know, we may be working from home. And I think a lot of the time the work and the life boundaries can get blurred. So it's very easy to, you know, feel stressed out when you're working in an environment that, um, you know, you may feel like, oh, I need to clean, but I have to work. Um, or you may notice your house get a little bit messier than usual because you're uh, home more often. Um, or you may actually find that you're working more because your work is home with you. So I think uh, personally that really emphasizing those work-life boundaries is important. It's an important strategy and remaining mindful, mindful of cutoff times like, okay, I'm done working at this time. I really need to get up and go for a walk at lunch, or I need to make sure that I get a nutritious lunch uh, since I'm working from home. So those, I think those things are very important, especially right now in this environment. Another question we received uh, came from, I believe a student asking, how can I support veterans as classmates if I don't have military knowledge or understanding? Again, another fantastic question. I think at uh, most universities, uh, UCLA included, there are veteran resource centers, including or um, also uh, student veteran organizations. So usually the university or school has uh, a school sponsored activity like the veteran resource center. And within that student veterans organize and they have student veteran organizations. So both are really great places to check out for resources and to be able to uh, find, ways to support. But again, I think also having conversations uh, with your fellow students about their experiences that may be as simple as what was it like to serve in the military? And, and then just leaving space um, to, to hear the response and the reply and, and going from there is a really important technique to use. So thank you for that question. A uh, related question asks about uh, options for UCLA student veterans, especially financial aid options and other support? Again, the VRC, the Veterans Resource Center on the UCLA campus is a fantastic resource. They're benefits experts. Uh, we have a great relationship at the VFWC with the VRC and we're happy to offer uh, any resources. And uh, at the VFWC, we really work to have very meaningful and vetted partnerships to get uh, great resources into the hands of veterans and families to be able to support them along their journey, regardless of where they are. So um, please check in with the VRC and um, remember that our resources are also here to serve you. And uh, one question I think reflects the fact that we are, as you said, all working at home, uh, oftentimes with children who are going to school in our living rooms uh, <laughs> and asks if there's a way that children can help by writing to veterans. There absolutely is. Uh, the VFWC has partnered with an organization called Project Giving Kids. Uh, the, this is a, a slate, a week long slate of activities that will be coming up uh, Veterans Day week. So you may wanna check out their website at projectgivingkids.com. We will be doing a project in conjunction with them that entails a presentation on veteran and family culture from, from the VFWC, and then the kids will be making toiletry and card kits. So there's that, but also there's a national website called a millionthanks.com that was started uh, by a 15 year old who wanted to extend as much thanks to the military and veterans as possible. So check out their website, a millionthanks.com. Great tips. And I wanna ask you about your work as well. How has the work of the Veteran Family Wellness Center changed during the pandemic? Well, I think at first, a lot of our participants were shoring up. Um, work, childcare, school, finding the new balance, really kind of figuring out what the impacts of COVID uh, at its start were going to be. 
it was a very challenging time. I think that a lot of us were very unsure of what this was going to look like as we saw the, the support uh, goods flying off the shelves, mm -hmm. uh, trying to stock up and just uh, be mindful of the basic necessities. So at the VFWC, what we did was uh, switch to telewellness. We wanted to take care of our team to be able to take care of yours. Um, so we rather quickly um, converted over to a telewellness uh, protocols. Um, and thank you to the St. John's Health Foundation for all of your support in creating uh, the telewellness program. It, it was absolutely crucial during this time. Um, we've also really tried to build a culture of support so virtually, virtual wellness, um, a, a virtual wellness and recreation day, programming uh, like workshops. Uh, we've got some new workshops that we've um, put out, one transition engagement and mentoring, which is a transition resilience program that's not only good for when you're just getting out of the military, but as a very dear friend of mine likes to say, we are transitioning every moment of every day. So at any point, it's helpful. Um, we've also been getting more service requests for services um, that we might not necessarily provide. So we do a lot of referrals to partner organizations, especially for the financial resources, the housing, and the food stability. Because as you know, uh, with economic impacts, uh, the basics like being able to afford food, um, bills, electricity bills, those types of things uh, is impacted. So at this time, our partnerships have become vital and we are very grateful. Uh, we've also developed some new partnerships. We've been working in conjunction with the LA County Department of Mental Health, um, the Nathanson Family Resilience Center and the DMH UCLA partnership. Um, so there's a new website learnforwellbeing.org uh, where uh, people can go and uh, learn more about how to cope with the pandemic with uh, COVID-19. In addition to that, we've um, been working very closely with the Veteran Peer Access Network that I mentioned previously in order to help train those 55 county peers that were, are going to be the boots on the ground around the county. And what about for the average person who maybe wants to help their family or friends or neighbors who are veterans? What are some actions they can take? Well, I mean, to take opportunities um, to engage with the veterans in your life. So maybe learn a little bit about the culture. Um, culture varies from service to service. Uh, you have different branches of service with their own different traditions. That can be a lot of fun to learn about. So you can always engage in that way. Again, asking that question, what was it like to serve? A fantastic place to start. So just opening up uh, the, the ground for that conversation um, and engaging from there. And then also offering opportunities uh, around the neighborhood. So maybe there's a neighborhood charity drive. Maybe there's something you do annually together as a neighborhood, um, collecting, uh, say, even Toys for Tots or collecting canned goods. Uh, in addition to social opportunities, I know right now we're socially distanced, but you know, just saying hello holds a tremendous amount of weight. Um, you can always invite a veteran or their family member to a meeting of an organization that you're part of. Some of those that come to mind are Rotary or the Cham Chamber of Commerce. Um, I personally was invited to the Pacific Council uh, on International Affairs by a community member and it made a huge impact on my life as a veteran um, by giving me uh, an, an arena uh, that I was interested in to, to really examine outside of my work. And it was a great gift. So conversely, you can also ask what organization uh, the veteran in your life might be part of or a neighborhood veteran and maybe ask to attend one of their meetings. A lot of our meetings right now are virtual and that includes the American Legion, the VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Disabled American Veterans, Vietnam Veterans of America and other organizations that hold oftentimes monthly meetings. And what about just helping veterans in general, if you don't have a specific veteran in mind? Well, I think that uh, targeted donations to reputable organizations really help. Um, there are definitely ways to, to vet organizations that you donate to. And I think that that is um, very important to ensure that your funding is being used in the way that you intend. Um, but there are a whole host of needs 
that sometimes aren't considered uh, in terms of supporting veterans and family members. For instance, there are family needs such as childcare for appointments, legal assistance, family especially, there aren't many funds for that at all. Um, and currently, again, there are needs for food and clothing. So the West Los Angeles VA campus that the VFWC is part of has opened up a program in response to COVID-19 as a means of um, caring for homeless veterans who might have been you know, out in the wider community on the street. And it's called the CTR, Care, Treatment and Re Rehabilitation Services. Uh, so there they're able to get uh, medical care and the donations really mean a lot to them. So right now you can actually donate to the VA Voluntary Services. And there's a website for that. But, um, if you Google them, uh, you can get their phone number and you can actually ask, hey, what do, what do you need um, in the VA Greater Los Angeles Healthcare System? What can I donate to be able to assist with the CTRS and other programs? Um, a, a great way to support um, is also funding family programming. So, um, you know, looking into um, donating to an organization like Village for Vets that provides those stipends for rent relief, um, especially because veterans may have lost their job. Um, you can practice advocacy um, in, in the legislation that you support and look into what your representatives are doing for veterans and their families, which is very important because there's a whole host of um, challenges or issues that may have come into existence for military service that you can advocate for. And then finally, you can reach out, just again, having that conversation, saying hello, how are you feeling? just asking. So I like to describe it as just ask, be there. So be there in the way that you can. Not everybody has the capacity to, um, you know, be there in ways that uh, involve a lot of time or money. But again, just saying, hello, um, I care about you is really important. And then connecting, knowing what the resources in the community are. If you do come across a veteran or family member who's struggling, um, to be able to connect them to is really important. The uh, Blue Star Families 2019 Military Family Lifestyle Survey indicated that uh, roughly 48% of veterans and their family members out of their respondents indicated that they don't really feel at home in their communities. Uh, I know if you're hearing this and if you're watching this presentation, you probably think, what can I do about that? So definitely just reach out and um, help veterans and their families feel like part of the community. So much great advice um, and I think a, a lot of good ideas for people who may really genuinely want to help but just need to know where to get started. Uh, we're coming uh, toward the end of our time, but I definitely want to ask you, we've looked at many of the challenges that are facing veterans, but there are also strengths and of course experiences gained in military service that can make veterans especially resilient. So what can the rest of us learn from veterans right now? Well, I think that being a veteran entails just a feeling of serving something greater than yourself. A grit, challenging yourself to make it past obstacles that you might not have thought that you could make it through. Um, innovation to carry out your mission. Enduring, uplifting others because part of the reason that many of us serve is to support others and to support our country and our communities. Um, the proud traditions of service, and also the core values. Uh, so every branch of service uh, has core values that are really interesting to look at. So if you get a chance, um, I would say look those up and um, it gives you a better idea of uh, the values that many veterans carry around with them as they approach community life. For instance, uh, the Marine Corps, where I served, our core values are honor, courage, and commitment. Are those uh, helpful to you right now? I would assume so. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, it definitely um, is a very challenging time all around, not just for veterans, for, for individuals in, in the wider community as well. And before I let you go, uh, do you have any parting words that you'd like to share? Absolutely. Um, I would say, um, please hold close, especially right now um, during this challenging time, veteran or otherwise, that maybe there's a lot of challenges, but there's also the opportunity for growth. 
So in our challenges come opportunities for growth um, and success. Thank you, Tess. This has been a really moving and meaningful conversation. Uh, I really appreciate your time with us. And once again, for our audience, this has been Tess Banco, the Executive Director of the UCLA VA Veteran Family Wellness Center. Tess, thank you so much for your time and answers. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. To our audience, thank you for tuning in to UCLA Connections. And to learn more about Tess's work and the Veteran Family Wellness Center, please visit vfwc.ucla.edu. For general mental health and resilience guidance, whether you're a veteran or not, you can also go to wellbeing4la.org. That's wellbeing, the number four, la.org. To rewatch or share the conversation or get more information about the UCLA Connection Series, please visit ucla.edu slash connections. And once again, thank you for joining us.